So I followed the roadway. So I went around this half circle to get back to my tent. I walked into my campsite, and we had a screen tent that went over the top of our uh, picnic table that had all sorts of food on it. Okay, and it was wide open. I thought, oh, nobody closed the screen tents. So I zipped up both the screen or the side, the flaps on the screen tent, and we had a great big, uh, oh gosh, uh, it's a it's a ten by ten or ten by twelve Coleman square tent. It's about six and a half feet tall at the at the peak. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Uh, I unzipped the tent. I got in. I zipped it back up. I sat down on the mattress, took my shoes off, and I heard it walk through the woods. So it came from it came from the opposite side of the oval. It walked straight across the oval, you know, the wooded area in this oval, and it ended up right in the middle yes. of our campsite. It walked out, and it immediately started beating, or not beating, but it started pushing on the top of the tent. And it walked around oh our tent about God. three times. I could clearly hear its feet. The tent was shaking. Uh, like crazy, and I'm looking to see where is it pushing, where is it pushing. It's not pushing on the side because I couldn't see on the side where it was pushing. It wasn't until later uh-huh. on that I realized it wasn't pushing on the sides. It was pushing on the top of the tent. Oh my okay, God. and that's why all four sides were shaking at the same time. Okay, so I listened to this, and this thing circled the tent three times, and then it sh- you could it was purposely shuffling its feet, and then it stopped pushing on the tent, I could hear it walk off to the side, and I heard what sounded like towels flapping in the wind. You know, like if you're if you're snapping out towels, like you're gonna snap somebody's behind with a towel. It sounded mm-hmm. like that, and that lasted for I don't know, probably 20 seconds, and then I heard it clearly walk away towards another campsite. Good and it being. <laughs> It being 3.15 in the morning or so, whatever time it was, uh, I, I was really, really tired, and I just kind of laid there, and I was like, I don't want to get up, and I don't want to look out. I just want to, I just want it to be done. And I remember you coming yeah. back, but I was so tired. Like, he came back, and I just, I was like, okay, lay down. Go to sleep now. Like, for me, the night was over. Let's just go to sleep. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, mm-hmm. the next morning comes around, and I slept in. I slept in until, like, 9 o'clock. And it was the night, or it was the morning that everybody leaves. So generally, what happens then is everybody comes over, says goodbye, shakes your hand, and you know you talk about pleasantries, and then people leave. Well, I heard somebody say, "Hey, Dad, Dad, you got to come out here, Dad, wake up." Well, and wait, because <laughs> Caroline, one of Caroline's sons, Caroline got up first. We always, we usually camp together, and um, I walked out of our tent. And I'm pretty sleepy, but you know, her her younger son was sitting on one of our little things eating graham crackers and like one of the little bins and he's like, Hey Jen, did you see the tent? And I was like, What? He said, Look and I turned around and, and that screen tent was was broken. It was two of the arm two of the legs were twisted and crushed down. And oh I, my I, God! But I, yeah. I looked at it and I said, <laughs> "I said, and I know this is a family show, but my family heard me say it, so I said, oh, shit.'" And he said, Jen, "Yeah, oh that's my what my God. mom said too." <laughs> it was so funny. Yeah, that's what my mom said too. You know, being out there in the Holy. woods for yeah, it was. Um, we were shocked. Um, but but we were so tired. All I could think was, oh, "How am I going to clean this up?" Because all of our, like, our chairs were underneath it, and we had food mm-hmm. and the coffee. That was what hit me first. The coffee maker's under that. How is Caroline going to make me coffee this morning? <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, Priorities. I don't, Priorities. Exactly. I thought, what am I going to do? Take a picture? I don't care. How am I going to get coffee out of this? Yeah, so all I'm hearing is, hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. You awake? Dad, <laughs> come on out. You know, so I, I, I get up and I roll out and here is the screen tent. It's all in a heap. And I remember seeing two of those posts sticking straight up in the air. And, I, and I'm like, what happened to the tent? And they're like, I don't know. You know, and at that point, I re- hadn't really told anybody. You know, it, it was mm-hmm. really just an isolated to me event. I hadn't told anybody what happened. They're like, I don't know what happened to the tent. But this was not a cheap tent. It was a very well-made 
strong. Mm-hmm. Well, no, Coleman tents are, are very sturdy. I mean, they're, they're terrific <sighs> tents. Yep. And, and I'm looking at oh, this, boy. and as I walk by, I look down, and I distinctly remember looking down, and it, it has, it's got four posts. It's a screen tent, so it's got four upright posts, and it's got a square frame up on top yes. that holds the actual roof of the tent. Two of those posts were bent like they were bent, uh, they, were, they were twisted tight to the base of that, of that square. And I looked down, and I was like, and the first thing I thought was, a Sasquatch did that. <laughs> was the first thing I thought, but then, of course, as a, as a group leader, you cannot incite his, you cannot incite uh, you cannot jump to a to a conclusion like that. Right? To conclusions, you have to show right, that, right. Yeah, you can't jump to that conclusion. So I was like, I Sasquatch did that because that's too tight for a person to do. You know, so I looked down at that and I thought, oh, okay. All I could muster was, wow, that's something. And then people are coming up to leave and they want to shake my hand. You know, and they want to say thanks for a nice try, or a nice investigation, and that, all that stuff. So immediately, I'm swept away. But this tent is torn up, and these poles are twisted, and it's laying all in a heap. They're like that. So I walk it over. I'm shaking hands with these people, and it's just a constant stream of people. And 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 before you know it, know it, somebody, you know, everyone wants to help each other. Before you know it, the tent is carried off and it's thrown in a dumpster. And we never thought to take a picture. And we never had a chance or had a thought to take a picture. And, oh, and good heavens! End, yeah. yeah. And then at the end, you know, I mean, so many. I mean, so many people saw it. There were a lot of people who saw it. I mean, it, it was kind of a big deal for that for that time. But nobody ever took a picture. And then good just heavens. about everybody's gone. And Caroline looks at me and she says, "Larry, what do you think actually happened here?" And I says, "Caroline, I says." This is what happened last night. And I told everybody then what happened the night before. And everyone's like, oh, yes. my gosh, you were sent a message. And mm-hmm. I was like, I hope not. <laughs> because, you know, if you really, the, the story is far longer than that because there was an event that happened earlier in the day. I am absolutely convinced that this was a, a critical mass event that happened as a result of a number of things that happened earlier in the day. Well, that what, campground. But, Go ahead. What had happened earlier in the day? Well, actually, Caroline had an event earlier in the day. That's right. Caroline, um, unfortunately, she was going to come on tonight, but she wasn't feeling well. And she had gone to the bathroom, and while she was in the bathroom, something was shuffling outside of the something bathroom. Something came out of the woods and walked around the, the walked around the toilet that she was at. And this was in the middle of the day, but everybody was down at the meeting site. The meeting site was on the opposite side of the Oval. Everybody was down there, and we were actually waiting for her to show up. Uh, and she had gone to the bathroom. Uh, I was at a, at a site talking to some people, which was on the opposite side of this large Oval. She came down. Mm-hmm. She walked by. She stopped for a second, looked at me, and gave me that kind of look like, uh, you know, it'll, it'll wait. Okay? So mm-hmm. uh, something had happened to her. But then I was, again, going to go use the bathroom. I walked up the hill and there was somebody beating on a on a on a log in the woods, and I thought, "Oh, it's one of my kids," <laughs> because my kids <laughs> love the hatchet. You know, uh-huh. they love the hatchet. And one of my kids goes out, grabs the hatchet. As soon as we get out someplace, he has the hatchet. All he has his own hatchet. He goes out and he just starts hammering on logs, and he Absolutely. thinks he's going to cut firewood for everybody. And I'm Absolutely. thinking, "Oh, my kid's out there in the woods and he's chopping on logs, right?" So I'm walking, up, I'm walking up this hill following this noise because I'm going to say, hey, we're going to have a meeting here. You can't be out here by yourself. You know? And I go out there, and it stops just before I get to the, cr- to the crest of the hill and where I'd be able to look down mm-hmm. and see it, and, there, and it was mm-hmm. gone. Okay, so I thought that was a little bit weird. So I went to the bathroom, came back to the meeting, and Caroline came back to me, and she says, Larry, I just want to let you know that something really weird happened to me, and I don't want to blow the whistle on something that isn't real or may not be real. She said, I thought right. you just might want to know. And she told me the story about what happened to her with it walking around the toilet. And then I, I turned around and said, you won't believe what just happened to me. You know, and we shared these stories. And at that time, this was before everything happened with Fernando seeing the Sasquatch and then it coming out. And, and Oh, so this uh, is even before that oh, happened. Oh, it was before that. It was, it was in the morning. That It was that morning before. So something was, was getting a little bit ballsy, 
and uh, was starting to let its presence known. But we had been there for mm-hmm. four days up until that point. And this is a really quiet area. And that's one of the reasons why I tell people you need to make sure that when you go out Sasquatching in a large group that you make sure that you walk around with other people because keep in mind that you're walking into somebody else's house. Mm-hmm. You know, and at some mm-hmm. point, you know, if I walk into somebody else's house, they might, be, they might be nice to me for about the first 15 minutes, but after a while they're <laughs> going to start saying, why the hell are you here? Mm-hmm. And I mm-hmm. think that that's what happened. You know, it's time, to, time for you to leave. And I do believe yes. that that's what yes. happened there that day. So we had that event that happened to Caroline and myself, and then we had that event that happened, or that Fernando saw that one. There was a ter- just a terrible scream that I had heard about that, that they made when they were exiting the woods. And then uh, I had the issue with the, with the toilet and then our tent being destroyed. I think we look back and we say, I think we're all pretty much saying the same thing. We're glad that it was Sunday and it was time to leave. It was time to leave. It was time to leave because I don't I I don't know that I don't wanna I don't wanna think that something bad would have ever happened, but they were escalating their behavior at that place when we were Yes. Living. Well and and by the way, this is where we're hoping to go to this summer. Um, we're hoping to go back and you know, your your other guests, Kevin and Jennifer Malik, we're hoping that they will come with us. Um, they've expressed an interest and we're thinking maybe we could see if Jennifer can use her um, her skills as a sensitive maybe to reach out because we do have that feeling like we don't want these creatures to feel that we've, we're there to hurt them. Or, you mm-hmm. know, like how as a parent, I know I would be livid if I thought my children were being threatened. And that is certainly oh, not what we had absolutely. ever intended with these creatures. Right, right, right. No, absolutely. Uh, we we do have a quick comment uh, uh, from the chat room. If I can just share that with you, uh, from again from Wild Bill, uh, hey, and uh, this is he. He said these occurred at the 2015 Wisconsin expedition. Didn't your daughters and friends have an experience on the drive circling through the campground? Oh, uh, Jen, why don't you tell? You want me to tell this? Or you want to tell it? You you can tell it. Okay. See. This is the really tough part about the <laughs> about the situation that we're in. We've got three mm-hmm. small children. We do, or we're not. They're not small anymore, but they're certainly not adults. And they're very creative and interesting. And um... uh, anyway, yes, I... they are. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are. Oh, yes, they are. They're all extremely creative in so many ways. <laughs> ah, you, yes, I'm glad that you see it, Sanj. <laughs> Absolutely. So they, they love, Absolutely. They love to go. They love to go to these expeditions, not because of the Sasquatching. They love to love to go there because of the lake and and uh, being able to ride bikes around and around and around in circles and and go swimming and fishing and all that different stuff. They like to do it for you know the, the traditional vacation reasons. So absolutely. Uh, anyways, yes. we're, our kids come along with us, and uh, I'm. Jen does, you know, Jen and I are a partner when we do these things. Jen does a lot of the administrative work up front, and then she pretty much gets to uh, enjoy herself and be social at... Uh, at <laughs> oh, no, I become camp mom, and I uh, walk around. I do the same mom. stuff I do at home, only I do it outside for a week. Pick that up. Oh, dear. Why are you throwing that on the ground? Pick up your clothes. Hang up that wetsuit. What are you doing? Same stuff, oh, different God. setting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but God. Then, uh, oh God! But then, when we get there, you know, I, I kick in and I try to I try to run the expedition while we're there. I, you know, I organize things, I make things, I, I make things go. I, I recruit people to help out, and I'm really much, mm-hmm. pretty much on the go from the time that we get there to the time that we leave. And uh, we got the, we got these three kids that are running around at the same time. Well, they make friends. You know, we had, our, our two daughters made friends with uh, a couple of kids, other kids that were there at the time that we were there. And uh, uh, what had happened is at dusk on one of those, I was one of the first nights that we were all there. They were walking through the campground, and they were just, they were pretending they were looking for Sasquatch. And I will say that, I will say this again, I do believe that that campground, I'm convinced that that campground has a sentinel, uh, on behalf mm-hmm. of the great big large family group, 
that lives in that area. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. so, and I think that the more people that that end up coming in, the closer he gets to, it gets to camp, and I think that that's just natural behavior for them. Because they want to see the more people that show up at that place, the more they want to know what's going on and whether or not we're a threat. Absolutely, um, yes. Mm-hmm. So my kids are running around. There's a group of four of them, and they happen to be walking around right at dusk. We were having a meeting on uh, the other end of the campground, and uh, they said that they just happened to stop, look into the woods, and right behind a tree stood up a great big tall black mass. And oh I my looked God. at them, and our oldest daughter was emphatic about this. She is incredibly emphatic oh, about this. Is that the and sketch that she drew? Yes, that's that the sketch is, that yeah. she drew you. <laughs> that is the sketch. Okay, okay. <laughs> yep. The light bulb so anyway, just went on. Okay. She said, "She said what happened was she looked there, looked there, and they were looking for. They were they were just a squad of four researchers. There were were our own little research group. They looked in the, into the darkness, and it stood up. And uh, there was a little boy with them who was about seven years old, and he had a little plastic gun. And uh, she said she." Uh, he, she said he picked it up and he was going to point it. She says, don't do that. So she grabbed it, and like my daughter would, she grabbed it and she pointed it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, she oh, pointed dear. and she says as soon as she picked it up and pointed it, it turned sideways, gave the classic patty look, and it strode off into the darkness. And uh, so anyways, we're running our meeting over there. We're talking about what we're going to do that night. She comes in. In between, uh, you know, right after everybody was kind of going off to take care of their stuff before we went on our night hikes, she comes and she says, Dad, 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 we saw a Sasquatch, we saw a Sasquatch. And me being the, the leader of this group for that night, I looked down and I'm like, sure you did. Okay? I mean, I, I, it sounds like I've got bad dad syndrome. But, uh, you know, you, you're, when your kid walks up to you, when you're worried so much about looking and 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 looking credible and maintaining, you know, a good uh, a good presence as a researcher. You know, when your daughter or your kid walks up to you and says, Dad, I just saw a Sasquatch, the first thing you think is, oh, my gosh, not right now, not right now. You know, and I says, hold on, I'll talk to you in a minute. You know, and then I came back and I says, okay, what happened? And she told me what mm-hmm. happened, and it sounded very classic as to what most people would would uh, would report. Yes. And yes. Uh, so right away, I dismissed it. And I, I told her, I says, okay, that all right. I want to hear more about this. We'll talk about this uh, tomorrow morning, okay? And, and I want to talk to all your friends, you know, because that's what you do if you're a researcher. You want to talk to everybody who is involved. Well, the next right. day we Absolutely. did track everybody down, and I did make it a point to talk to everybody independently, and everybody had the same exact story, right down to Delaney grabbing. My daughter, I'm sorry, my daughter grabbing the gun from the little boy and her pointing it in the woods. When you talk to them individually, you look for, when you talk to witnesses individually, you want to look for little small details that don't, that don't correspond. That, mm-hmm. There were a number of, right down, to, right down to the very last detail, it was my two daughters, my younger daughter corresponded everything that, Del- that my daughter had said. And then when I talked to the other two kids, they said it exactly like my two daughters had said. And mm-hmm. uh, it, at that point, I, w- I had this wash over of, I'm, I'm a bad dad. <laughs> I'm a bad oh, dad. Dear. You know, because uh, it sounds like I don't know what it is that they saw. You know, there's nothing that says that it wasn't somebody that was another camper that just happened to be in the woods and they misinterpreted it. But uh, they're, I, I believe wholeheartedly that they believe that they saw what they saw. Yes, uh, yes Because all their absolutely. stories cor- correlate. And by the way, uh, if uh, the, the large, uh, if, if Nathan's family and Fernando's family are listening, that's the same night that Dustin had, uh, had recorded, uh, he, he, his campsite was within probably 30 yards of where they thought that they saw this. Mm -hmm. He recorded something approaching their tent, making grunting noises for about 15 minutes at three o'clock. Yes. And 
and he actually just sent that to me uh, yesterday or this morning <laughs> for me to take a listen to. Um, and you really? know what's yep. really interesting? Yes. Mm -hmm. and did in you fact, meet them for at the listening, party? Yes, I did. I met them at the viewing party, and Fernando, uh, Nathan, and Dustin, and hopefully Bernie, will be on the show in April, oh. uh, which is very oh, exciting. Oh, right? awesome. And Bernie, Bernie yeah, so, a really, um, he's a really dedicated researcher. It's worth the listen. He'll, he'll, he'll provide nothing but facts. Yeah, wonderful well, I'm, and i'm looking forward to getting these guys on the show it's, it's going to be fantastic and but yeah that um, was the same night delaney or my daughters had seen this or witnessed this within about 30 yards of where dustin had recorded this and i listened to that and i'm like that's nothing like i'd ever heard before it didn't sound like a pig didn't sound like a raccoon it didn't sound like nothing that i'd ever heard of before happened it didn't sound like a porcupine right Which there are porcupines up there it didn't sound like any of that stuff it was a a a strange amount of grunting and shuffling and all that sort of stuff outside their tent. It was pretty interesting. Well, and what I thought, what I found interesting about this story, because obviously I was not there. Um, I had no idea what had happened. And as you recall last weekend, uh, Delaney and I were drawing, <clears throat> were, were drawing together at the house and yep. mm -hmm. uh, I would draw something and she would copy it. And then she would draw something and I would copy it. And as we were just, you know, chatting away and enjoying each other's, you know, just hanging out and uh, doing crossword puzzles and all sorts of fun stuff. And then she said, oh, I'm going to draw a picture of, for you of the Bigfoot that I saw. And I, like I said, I did not know the story. I did not know what had happened. And she drew this picture. And I, I recall looking at it and thinking, holy cow, this is a great picture. <laughs> It, it, it yeah. was it was very clear that it had been drawn from life, that it was not the subject of someone's imagination, that it was a picture of something she had seen. And I recall that I asked her, I said, Delaney, did you see this? <laughs> and she just sort of looked at me and said, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, she you know, said, and then I realized that she and, and Tegan had seen it together, and I had absolutely no idea. It, it, I was just gobsmacked uh, listening to and seeing it just appear on the page. I'm sorry, you were saying, uh, forgive me. Two years in a row, we had we had in campground heavy in campground presence uh, at our uh, at our uh, expeditions. And I've come to the conclusion right now that thinking that, you know, we've got lots of hot spots. You know, when you, when you, that's what the BFRO likes to do. The, the BFRO likes to find a campground and then mm -hmm. that you can radiate from uh, and then walk back to so that, so that uh, experiences will follow you back and they'll want to, and you want to have in campground uh, activity. And they like to, yes. they like to try yes. to set up thing, uh, scenarios like that. Uh, I've come to the conclusion that this ca this particular campground has a sentinel, and like I told you before, his his job is to watch, is to is to supervise this campground, and to uh, watch for escalated activity. And I, I'm pretty well convinced that in the future, any sort of real investigation needs to be centered on catching the sentinel when he comes in close, when it comes in close, uh, because mm -hmm. obviously it can happen. It uh, Delaney, like I said, my daughters caught it on on the side of the trail. Just happened to catch it mm -hmm. uh, on the side of the roadway at dusk. I I think that there's some predictability that can happen here uh, by people if they go in there with a plan, and that's something that we've wanted to do. You know, from the first yes. year, which was 2014 to 2015, we learned from 2014. We wanted to come in with a plan in 2015, and it, for the most part, the plan worked. I mean, I, I depend a lot upon other investigators that are out there and rick did a great job setting up that bar height trail uh incident where fernando saw that sasquatch uh he he was the one who should be credited with coming up with that strategy and he did a really good job but uh in in the next if we ever do another installment up there where we try a coordinated event it will be centered around trying to catch that sentinel not catch mm -hmm. him in a box because lord knows i don't want to die but mm -hmm. it would it would be caught up caught around or it would be centered on trying to catch that sentinel prowling that campground when when there's a lot of people there and trying to catch him you trip him up yes so, yes absolutely
Absolutely. And believe it or not, we are just about out of time. Oh, my goodness. Uh, that went quickly. That was the fastest that went, I can remember. That went incredibly fast. Uh, it, And I, I can't even believe that it's it's 8.57. We, we're, we are literally two hours done. And wow, I can't wait. Uh, well, let's, let me back up. I'm so excited that I had you guys back on the show tonight. Thank you so much and for sharing your stories and your experiences. And I can't wait uh, to get back up to this place this summer uh, that you invited me to. So thank you for that. Oh, I really hope you can make I, it. I, I, well, I it's really on my calendar. Taking, so. Yeah, I really oh, appreciate you taking the interest in us and and uh, inviting us on your show again. I, it's it's a good event. We We really appreciated it. Well, and, and, and I do too, and you guys are welcome on this show anytime, whether as in the chat or as guests or as mystery guests, and <laughs> I, I'm just fascinated, and I love our conversations, and I, I, they could easily just go on and on and on and on, and we'd never get bored, and, and that's always a wonderful aspect of any friendship, so I, I greatly appreciate it, you guys, Larry and Jen, and for everyone listening again, we are at the end of the show. I, I can't believe we two hours just flew past. Uh, please join me next week for a special program with Charlie Raymond from Kentucky. And then the week following from Rich Blackett from England. And then the UCS Admins show with Linda Godfrey, Travis Wolf, Sandra Schwab, and Kim Popey. Uh, discussing some of their paranormal experiences. And then in April, I'm very excited to welcome Fernando, Nathan, Dustin, and Bernie uh, to the show. So again, a great That'll lineup a of show. people. Be a fun show. It will. I, I can't wait to get those guys on the air. I, I chatted with them a little bit at the party and we just had a great conversation. They're fantastic people and uh, just a lot of great insight and a lot of great experience. So very, very much looking forward uh, to having them on the show as well. Uh, for everybody in the chat room, thank you so much for participating. I'm just absolutely thrilled with tonight's show. And Thanks, uh, Bill, Wild Bill, I'm gonna, yes, Bill and Digger, some great questions. Thank you so much. And uh, we tonight. See, 90 seconds to go. So again, uh, Larry and Jen, thank you so much. Uh, everybody who was listening, thank you for joining us. Please have a great evening. Good night and God bless.